Greetings! In the last section, we learned about context in Knockout JS. In this section, we're going to look at a really nice feature in Knockout called Computed Observables. We're also going to look at subscribing to changes in observables and performing actions based on those changes. This video is all about computed observables. We'll cover how to create and use computed observables and pure computed observables, as well as a variation that makes them writable. Computed observables are one of my favorite features of Knockout JS. They're functions that have dependencies on other observables, and when they change, the computed observable automatically updates. You can, for example, perform a calculation using the values of other observables and data bind to the value. If any one of those dependent observables changes, the computed observable also updates its calculation and then notifies the subscribers. We're going to update our project to data bind to a sorted list of data that we will access through a computed observable. To start, open MediaViewModel.js and add an undefined public variable named SortedCatalog. Then, in the init method, assign the variable to a knockout computed. The first parameter of the computed function is a callback that returns the result. The second parameter is the value of the JavaScript this object literal that is used in the callback. Think of the second parameter as the context used in the callback. In our case, we'll pass our module export as the context since we're going to refer to the public observable properties in the callback. The reason we're defining the computeds within the init method is because computeds are evaluated when they're declared. If your computeds use other properties that are not yet declared or defined, you're likely to get unexpected results or errors. By keeping the declaration separate from the definitions, you can avoid this issue. Our sorted catalog computed will return the catalog observable after it has been sorted. To sort, we'll use the sort function available to the observable array object. I'll sort first by media type and then by name. Notice that I refer to the catalog observable using the this object. I can do this because I passed in the module export as the context. In our view, all we need to do is change the for each bindings assignment to sorted catalog. When we look at it in the browser, we can see that the list is now sorted. If we were to dynamically add or remove an element from the catalog observable array, that change would be reflected in our view and automatically sorted through the sorted catalog computed observable. Now, open borrowerViewModel.js and add a public property named sorted borrowers. This time, in the init method, assign the property to Knockout's pure computed function. The parameters are the same as the computed we did in the media view model example. And the sort is the same, except that we're going to sort on name first and then email. Now we can switch over to the view. Update the view by changing the for each binding and then look at the results in the browser. In this scenario, the behavior of the computed and pure computed is the same. However, Knockout's pure computed observable offers some performance and memory utilization advantages over the plain computed observables. In most cases, you're going to want to use pure computed. But if you're going to use the computed observable to run a callback based on value changes in other observables, which honestly isn't a very common task, then you'll need to use a computed observable. Computed observables are also great for presenting a different perspective of your data. Let's change the dashboard view of our sample project and create a table of media items currently in our possession and another table of media items that have been borrowed. First, let's update our media model to accommodate borrowers and due dates. Then we'll add data to a few of our records in catalog.json for borrowers and due dates. Open default view model JS and add two public properties, one named borrowed and another named possessed. We'll assign undefined to them for now. Then, in the init method, assign Knockout's pure computed methods to these new properties. For borrowed, we'll return a filtered array using Knockout's array filter method, testing if borrower and due date are not null or undefined. Then we'll sort the results by due date. For possessed, we'll return a filtered array by testing if either borrowed or due date are null or undefined, 
and we'll sort this array by media type and name. Now open default HTML and change the for each binding in the table to bind against possessed. Then use Knockout's virtual element syntax to test if the borrowed array's length is greater than zero. Insert a table between the virtual element tags that displays columns for media type, name, and borrowed by, as well as due date. We'll use the for each binding to display data from our borrowed computed observable. Let's also change the color of the text in a row to red if the media item is overdue using the CSS binding. When we look at this in the browser, we'll see that there is a table for what we have in our possession as well as a table for what has been borrowed. Both of these tables are driven by the same set of data. We're just creating subsets of data to meet our needs. Most of the time, you're only ever going to use computed observables to read data. However, Knockout does provide a way for you to write to a computed observable in order to change the underlying observables. One practical use of this feature is to use a computed observable as a value converter. Add a new JavaScript file to the view models folder in your project named computedViewModel.js and insert the boilerplate revealing module code. Also add a new HTML page named computedHTML and insert the appropriate JavaScript references as a reference to the file we just created. In computedViewModel.js, create two public properties, phone and output. Assign undefined to phone and make output an observable. Now, in init, redefine phone as a pure computed. Instead of using a function as the first parameter, use an object literal. Add a property to this object literal named read and assign the output variable by referencing it from our module export. Now, add a property named write and assign a function with a single parameter. The parameter of this callback function is the new value of our computed observable. Let's assign this new value to our output observable, but first replace any non-digit characters as an empty string, ignore anything after the tenth digit, and format it as a phone number. Now, in the computed HTML view, add an HTML input and data bind the text input to phone. Also add a div and data bind the text to output. When we type 10 or more numbers in the HTML input, we'll see it reformat itself as a standard phone number. Computed observables are a very powerful and very flexible feature of Knockout JS. I'm sure you're already thinking of ways to use them in your next project. In our next video, we're going to take a second look at another powerful feature, the ability to subscribe to changes in our observables.